All right. So, Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for daily bread. And we thank you for your presence, the angelic host. We thank you that you are releasing a spirit of grace and wisdom in this hour that will take us to the next level that we desire. We even thank you right now that we understand the power of submission, the power of release, the power to let go and let God. And even in that power, we thank you that we release the power that would be, that has been over our life. The powers that would be, we just cast them down and we say that they have no more power over us. We break those powers in the name of Jesus in heaven and in earth. We break them where they have kept us from doing what we were called to do. We break those powers and the trauma, even that we've resonated with from family and social systems, from even religious systems. And we open our hearts and minds to understand more of your presence today in truth. You said that whom the son is set free is free indeed. And so God, we thank you for freedom from victim, and we go from a victim mindset to a mind of victory. And it is so, and it is so. Amen. Let's see. Share. Good morning. <clears throat> good morning. Good afternoon. Oh, okay. Um, God bless. Good afternoon. Hey, hey. Hey. Hello. Good afternoon. Buenas noche. No, wait, no. Buenas tardes. <laughs> Buenas tardes. Yes, you are tardy. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Good humor. Good humor. Good afternoon, everyone. Hey. Good humor. I, I was trying to record a webinar that's happening at the same time, so that's why I'm late. <laughs> oh, it's all good. I, I get it. I mean, people are like getting in the flow of work right now and um productivity because i um actually felt it yesterday after we came from the beach i worked and worked and it's like not normal the way that i was or it's not been like that in a while so um i was up to 11 o'clock doing work but um everybody just say i'm doing well when i say how are you doing i'm doing well i'm doing i'm doing well, well. All right, so victim to victory. All right, a victim cannot say that they're doing well. And one of the things that um, I like about this topic is that every one of us have been it. Uh, you can go to your charts um, after we finish and look at what house, um, um, or what you have in the 12th house. <clears throat> and then you'll be able to see what you need to work on to come out of the victim mentality. Um, it's profitable because as a victim, what happens is, is that we continue to experience lack. And so um, rebuilding the mindset um, is um, necessary. Um, Pisces is the uh, sign, I want to just add this, Pisces is the energy and the sign that's attributed to um, Christianity, and a lot of people don't know it. So the fish are back and forth, you know, and um, 
they're confused and there's a decision that needs to be made there. So the one that keeps going backwards is like going back into the past and the one that's going forward is going in the, the future. And what you have there is um, a double-minded person, um, someone that can't make decisions for themselves. And a lot of times it's hidden, it's hidden. Just like um, many of the powerful things about um, certain people are not exposed. Powerful people that created things are hidden right now. And so in uh, Pisces, there are hidden information that we sometimes have came across, but we didn't entertain it because it don't look familiar. Yet our outside experiences are showing us that that uh, energy is um, working in our lives, which is illusions and delusions. And you know, the thing about this is, is it is a martyr mentality. And um, we know that Jesus was a martyr. You know, Stephen was a martyr. You can pick out others, and then you can go into other religions as you know Buddha, and you will find martyrs. Now they chose to, but then I, I want to pose a, a question because a martyr. A lot of times people won't know, especially with us modern day martyrs that go through suffering and um, you carry that victim mentality. And a lot of times no one would know but the ones that's closest to you. I think that it's important to um, be transparent because you'll never overcome what you're supposed to if you don't reveal it. So lack has to do with victimization. Social constructs uh, create uh, victimization. Um, we can see leaders right now uh, posing um, thoughts of victimization. And so when you look at all of this, you wanna go back and say, how can I make myself better? Every day is make myself better. Um, why? Because that's where uh, the crossroad of promise is. I mean, I, 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 I hope we don't forget what we're doing here. And I think that we, we could, it's easy because so many things have changed. Um, I don't think the word of God changes. I just think that our consciousness evolves and we begin to see things even in the word that is exposed to us such as women not getting the respect that they should marry, carrying, um, so to speak, the God of the whole world, Jesus. This is the way it's professed, right? But she, she's in, in some religions, she's lifted up, but then in uh, Christianity, she's not. They, they don't want you to do that. And so what you find is, is that we're, we're victims to ignorance. because many people negate to study and you don't have to be a religious person to study you just want to study and, and find out why you know you're lacking your community your culture you want to find out and maybe you don't want to find out but if if you or someone didn't take that initiative to find out then we would always be victims we would always rally together and become victim and be victims. And then we wouldn't be showing our face uh, of um, victimization because we would be putting on a face that says, you know, I have, I have everything and I'm great. You know, um, I may not have a home to go to, but, you know, no one knows. And so I'm great. Or um, I live on food stamps and I drive this Mercedes. Yeah. So whatever you want you have to work for it. And that means that you gotta change the way that you think, you and I. We have to change the way that we think because if we have been through situations of victimization, surely there could have been someone that brought this upon us, but we allowed it, right? The victory is in rising, it's in, it's in rising over. Um, the, the winds of change and the mountains that have been put there because the mountains have been put there so that we can 
know that we can do it. A victim does not practice what they can do. They only look at who they are and what they can do right now. They might be, you know, lazy. They may be liars, procrastinators. Um, they're all caught up in traps of their own devices, jealousy and envy. I wish that um, um, I had what they had. Why? Can't you think for yourself? And you know, the person that thinks in a jealous mode is, you know, they're, they're tearing down what could come to them because they're thinking this way. They want some others have. What about what you could actually have, right? So I'm gonna um, read a little bit to you guys and then we'll pray again at the end because we wanna really entertain letting um, some of this stuff go that we keep saying that we're doing. And man, you, if there is any part that resonates with you, write down the root chakra and um, the sacral chakra because you need to focus on that. Those are confidence um, chakras and stability chakras. The red one, the root. All right. And then the orange is yellow one, which is right up above the root chakra. It is um, about confidence, self-esteem, um, and those things. You guys can look it up for yourself. So from victim to victory, this is a, it's a great accomplishment in life that many work for. While others sit back watching, we often fail to explain some of the important facts that correspond with the victim to victory mentality. Um, Numbers 13, it says, the Lord now said to Moses, send out men to explore the land of Canaan, the land I am giving to the Israelites, send one leader from each of the 12 um, a central tribes. And so that's, that has to do with your ancestry. Your ancestry. All right, I'm gonna go on from there. I'm not gonna go into that. Uh, these are the names of the men Moses sent out. And I didn't put them there, but it's the 12 sent out to explore the land. Moses called Hashua, son of Nun, by the name of Joshua. All right, so it was, um, I know Caleb and Joshua. Uh, Moses gave the men these instructions as he sent them out to explore the land. And there was more, I think it may have been 11, 10 or 11, something like that, um, the land. Go north through Nineveh into the holy I mean, to the hill country. See what the land is like and fill out whether the people living there are strong or weak. Are they strong or are they weak? So I would say it's not just for me to pick and say that I am strong when I am weak. I'm going into a land and a lot of people wouldn't read this the way that I'm going to show you, but I got to go into the land of myself before I can go into any other land. A lot of people don't understand that the Bible says that um, God created the heavens and earth. Therefore, you got to find out about you as heaven and earth first before you can go in and really figure out a land because see, you are going to land and we all have, because we didn't have this dynamic teaching. You go into land and you're seeking out someone else's strength. And this is spiritual. These stories are not about physical. So you take yourself out of the physical and you practice that you're going to do better. So are they strong or weak, few or many? So if you can figure out where you're strong and where you're weak, then you can be like Joshua and Caleb, see what kind of land they live in. It is, is it good or bad? Now, the land that we live in, 
physically. We can see that. But where do we fit in the good and bad? Because the land of a person has nothing to do with what they bought in, as far as physical land. We are made out of earth. That's why we have signs. So we function more as, you know, sometimes earth, wind, fire, uh, water, and um, yeah, I think I said all four, earth, wind, fire, wind, and water, uh, yeah. And, and because of that, a lot of times we do not see that we gotta go into the land of our own kinship, which is ourself, and figure out if we're weak or strong and where the weaknesses are where the strengths are. And if you are strong in the area, you may need to balance. And if you're weak in the area, you're gonna to need to balance because what happens is it's gonna bring you to um, the middle and that's where you're gonna be able to stand. Sometimes our strength is too great to actually demonstrate who we are because sometimes the people need to see that there is a level of weakness. And that weakness becomes meekness, all right? So I hope that you understand because when God created, he created man out of the dust of the earth. Therefore, you got to evaluate that before you can go in and actually look at territory. I think it's important. So do their towns have walls or are they unprotected like open camps? Is the soil fertile or poor? And then when you get all of that information, even what is being asked here concerning um, them spying out the land, when you figure this out about yourself, what happens is, is that you're able to become more fortified in who you are. Because how can you tell if land is fertile or poor if you don't even know that you are poor or fertile? And I'm not talking about having babies. I'm talking about the lack that many of us experience. And the lack is experience for us to get a lesson to understand. The biggest part of our ministries is, is um, not being able to go deep. Because, you know, your emotions, I can tell you how to deal with them. But it's going to be up to you to practice, just like right here. It's a scripture for everything that you, because uh, God created out of heaven and earth. He formed man out of earth. But then, you know, man got to realize that he was first spirit. This is the heavenly part. And you got to go back to that and depend on that wholeheartedly. Because that's the truth of who you are. You and I. And so it says, are there many trees? Do you guys know that trees in the Bible represent people? Yes. That's why they talked about the fig tree. It wasn't producing. That's a parable. Do your best to bring back samples of the crops that you see. Okay, you can go and plant a tree and it's not producing, right? But then I don't wanna talk about a tree, an orange tree, literally. I wanna talk about, are you an orange tree producing oranges? Because the victim don't have enough. They can't make it. It's not embarrassing, it's the truth. So how can you make it? How can you make it in life? What can you do to create a way out of no way? Because you have the power, right? So they go on and they're scouting out the land. And I only gave you two names. You can go back and look at this here for yourself you know, the chapter 13 of Numbers and 14. So it says, um, after exploring the land for 40 days, the men returned to Moses, Aaron, and the whole community of Israel at Kadesh. In the wilderness of Paran, they reported to the whole community that they had seen and showed them the fruit they had taken from the land. This was their report to Moses. They, they entered the land you sent us to explore, and it is indeed bountiful country, a land flowing with milk and honey. Here is the kind of fruit it produces, but the people living there are powerful, and their towns are large and fortified. We even saw giants there. 
the descendants of Ana, <laughs> the Amalekites live in Negev, and the Hittites, Jebusites, and Amorites live in the hill country. The Canaanites live along the coast of the Meridian, uh, I mean, yeah, Mid Mid Mediterranean Sea and along the, the Jordan Valley. But Caleb tried to quiet the people as they stood before Moses. Let's go at once to the land, he said. We can certainly conquer it. So this is where I stop and you can go back. This was the NLT version. Um, I've read the King version, uh, King James version many times. The thing about it is, is that it's all about how you see things, you see? And when you analyze yourself with some of those questions up there, you're looking at the land that you are and the soil and how you've been you know, fertilized and things were planted into you. Then you come back to a place and you're beginning to say, this is not the truth of me and this is. I keep some things and I, I throw away some things. How do I do that? by being truthful. The biggest problem with our households is that they didn't know how to raise truth. Only God or the goddess within knows how to raise truth. I believe that there's parents and aunts and uncles that stand by the truth. Now, I'm not gonna say that you know, no one is there. But there's been so much of an overwhelming <sighs> pressure on people to live the way that one person represents that it's killing people today. And it's killed people over the years and centuries, right? And it's because we've all in some way or another came here and tried to hold up the idea of what I should be and what I should not be, how I should look and how I should not look, what I should eat and what I shouldn't eat, how I should think and how I shouldn't. And the only way that you can get your thoughts together is to really focus on you. So here are some, you know, ideas and thoughts that you can kind of like come into a, a ruling out of victimization. And um, let's see. It says uh, victims are intimidated by what they see. A lot of times people don't understand that because someone that's been living in lack and they begin to uh, acquire things. They won't tell the truth about what's going on inside of them that they still got that feeling of lack. So they become intimid intimidated by what they see. And, and then what happens is, is that they take on the persona of being what people would identify them as good being. You know, they tend to look at external situations as if it is God's story for them. This is all about external. This is why we're going through so much in the world. Sometimes, you know, people are losing things because the question is, how will you sustain mentally? Where will your heart be? if I just take this away. And sometimes it's just for you know a time where we can uh, reflect on ourselves. And the biggest part of this here is that we make it long and drawn out because that's our focus, the winning. And not knowing God for true and for myself, goddess, however it is for you and your spirituality. You see, I didn't focus enough. I focused on what people were saying, but I ain't focused enough on what I think, which is very valuable. And this thinking is not lies to make you look good or to make you feel good. One of the things that uh, get, I have a problem with the church is when I go in 
I'm real. I'm going to be your friend. I'm going to tell you what I got problems with. I can be a holy terror. And you know what? I met a lot of people. They don't take that philosophy on, and that's fine. Because why you ain't getting yours, I am. And the reason why is, it's because all of the stuff that's happening right now, people are going through heartbreak. They never experienced it. Or they're staying in the battle too long. They fight in battles that were not even theirs. When you go into the church, there's so much controversy and sliding, fighting amongst each other. So you still got the victim mentality in the church because it's lack. Oh, I don't have this and I don't have that. Well, my story is bigger than yours and, and I've been through more than you. Gossip, everything that the Ten Commandments tell you not to do. I, I'm sure that there's churches that it's not happening in, but keep it real because this is what we look to. You know, I look to the hills from which cometh my help. We're looking to spirit. We've been looking for leaders to bring the spirit in to show us how to get it. But you are not going to get pure spirit without letting go of lies. The lies that we have been brought up with, the lies that society, we allow uh, society to impede upon us, cause us to be victims. From the beginning, our life, we came in here as victims. See, you got the chance to turn it around and, and make it victorious. And that's what this here Bible is really about. It works when you really get it because now you're on um, a journey that you understand all of the backwards stuff that you went through. You got to go forward and learn some more stuff such as the house of um, uh, the 12th house is the house of, um, gosh, my man slipping me. Anyway, it's like being bound, bound to something. You come over in ancestry and you carry some and, you, you know, you got to begin to work at untying yourself, the, se the house of uh, self undoing. So self means that you may have played a part in these issues. And they could be repetitious. I know that there's people that don't believe um, that they lived before, but God in you or the, the goddess in you brought you back here for some, this is energy in us. We are energetic beings. We came back here to do something, redo it, reset it, or fall at it again, right? However you see it, the answers to a lot of the questions is, is that no one wants to accept that there's great possibility that we've been here before. Now, I'm not pushing that on you. I'm just telling you because I didn't acquire all of this here hell that I didn't went through in one life. I came here as a nice kid, but I wasn't. And the truth of the matter is, is the hell that was in me would begin to show itself, not just from the life that I came in here went with, but also as I would grow into relationships, dealing with relationships. So many apprehensive uh, thought process, uh, thoughts. And then, you know, you look at the questions that's asked of Caleb and them when they go, you know, find out if they this and find out if they that. You begin to look at yourself and say, man, I was a hot mess. And I'm, you know, I'm still there because I posted on um, Instagram a dog that was cussing this morning. People don't like church people doing that. I'm not a church person. I'm into the truth and people need humor right now, right? So thank you very much. Victims, a victim mentality is when you blame everyone else for what happens in your world. Get responsible. Get responsible and stop blaming people. And it's a practice, consciousness. All of this here is consciousness because, you know, some of the smartest people will take this on and they'd be able to um, speak. They'd be able to speak and talk about it. But you ain't no good if you just talking and you ain't walking the walk. Like 
You dress your body up because you're beautiful outside, but you ugly as hell and sin inside. Can I get some help? Yes. And so the victim, they blame, all right? They don't take accountability. You know, can I get a, a what's the name of them things that used to be out on the street? Raw, raw, they blame. This is what we know. And it's not something that we read. It's something that I know from my own self, blaming people. And I only educate for you to overcome, not for you to come back and throw no daggers at me because that ain't going to be, it ain't workable. I'm going to tell you, I flip out. I teach because I want to see people do better. So those that li listen, even when the recording is given out, do not come at me. There's a lot more here. You'd be better to be on my side than not. Why? Because there's a lot of wisdom. It takes a lot for you to be able to be accountable for that, by the way, and also admit it. Because all through your life, what you have is people coming and saying, you're not this, you're not this. That means that they see you the way they see you. And it could add to victim because they keep beating you up. They doing, they're doing it for a reason. And the reason could be how great you are how you shine. Now, I don't want you to take that and, you know, you ain't doing your house cleaning, but I want you to look at it because when you do your house cleaning, what happens is, is that you'll come back with the greater part of you and you are to continue to rise above victimization. It's, it's up to you. It's up to us to see people coming that could victimize us. That means that while you rushing and hurrying to do everything, sit your behind down and think. They can wait, and if they don't wait, even the job, the house, whatever it is, it can wait or it, it's something better coming, the person. Yes, because when you rush, you're sure to get um, the victim mentality. And sometimes it can be, quick that you know you get a blessing but a victim is not looking at the things that they should look at from the lesson like were there giants in the land no one knows a giant <laughs> when they're a midget the midget could be no offense this is all about you know just um, ad living because someone could feel offended by you saying that they were a giant. And so, you know, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, the dwarves, they were powerful. So that means that there was some powerful substance within them. So you can look like the dwarves, but have a spirit of a giant. So anyway, they saw, or some of them, because Joshua and Caleb didn't see it the same way, which is important, because see how you look at things. You're either looking through the lens of your past or your future. Your spirit could be contaminated with what people think, the giants. It's giants in the land. They're big. They're going to overtake us. And because you had that mindset against or, uh, uh, you know, um, in, 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 in the relation to the giants, your inside truth is fearful. You're trembling. You might go and face it, but you got to have the confidence and the courage of God within you. That means that you ain't studying when you get into the battle. You, you studying and, you know, you... You girding up before you get into the battle. That's why it's important to practice. And, you know, I'm going to speak to seers. Everyone on here has the ability to see. When you start seeing things, it's not the first time. You should have been studying your spirituality. And some people will hear me and they'll say, whatever, whatever, in the next 21. How about that, Mr. and Mrs. Whatever? 
your foundation, wherever you are, you better have your hooks in your spiritual foundation. This is the time when the Pentecost movement is actually coming. The water bearer is pouring out, which is why I've been teaching on Uranus. It's a wonderful thing when you get information that you weren't supposed to get. And you know what? You didn't get it from nobody, but you got it from spirit, the realm of authenticity. Yet you keep showing up people with unauthentic works and the mask that we wear causes us to become victims so one day we take it off or we, we make a mistake and people start seeing us we can't hold it up that's the part about man and god woman and god goddess they can't hold up their lies they can't even remember because it becomes too much. They're practicing at lying. You practicing at lying like practicing a doctor or you practicing at being beautiful, but you don't feel it. And then the, the, the mask start coming off and people really start seeing that you don't feel like that. Well, you know what? I'm gonna just tell you. It's days when I don't feel like it. And I'm gonna tell you, or I'm, I may not answer my phone. Keep it real. We're humans and we're spiritual beings. Why lie? Why put on a facade? Break that power. Because it keeps you in a backwards position. What's wrong with the truth? By the way, I think every one of us on here said that we are Christians. Stop lying then. If you can't take off the mask and be transparent, stop the lying. Because I'm going to tell you, I don't want to go to nobody's church no more because that's all that I experienced. And I don't want to I don't want to experience it with women or men that I come together with because I want to create. I don't want to live in hell. That's me. I want prosperity. I want to cross over. I'm like Caleb. I don't you know what? I don't care what you look like. Do you have a heart like me? That's, that's the question. And a lot of times people don't even understand when you examine your heart versus the enemy, your enemy is right there because it wants you to woman up or man up in your heart. You're fearless. You can't just say you're fearless and not walk it out. You can't, it's consciousness, awakening to it, you know? So moving on. The mentality, a mentality is when a person thinks that the future only holds bad things for them. This is a victim mentality as well, because you done been through so much that you just can't, <laughs> you can't see that things are going to get better. I've been there. I've been there. But you know what? I know how to deal with my mind. And one of the things I don't care is what people think about me, because they ain't paying my bills and they ain't doing nothing for me. That's how I feel. And it's not being nasty, but where is the truth in it? People run from stuff because they fear what people are gonna say. Listen, you keep running. It's gonna be following you because it is you. All of that stuff created you and your false reality. Now undo it in the real reality, authenticity, right? You won't be a victim to your circumstances any, anymore. And then by the way, stop creating that mess whatever it is you know what it is right get over yourself that's what i had to say to myself oh you crying about this that any other shut up yeah okay well i want to talk to myself about it a little bit more okay i'm gonna still say shut up because it's like one voice over here and one over here it's you right so the scenarios of the victim can be, and these are examples, relationships we tend to blame other people for the outcome of failed relationships too. Just didn't work. Ooh. We focus on the other rather than ourselves. Listen, there's so many other people out there. 
disconnect yourself from that BS. If it didn't work and God allowed it to be broken, possibilities is, is that it's something better, right? You got to think outside of the box. Like, I mean, your mind is the, oh, I married for better or for worse. Well, sometimes they didn't. Sometimes you you met your boyfriend or girlfriend and, you know, you just knew it was love. It, you felt it. You got some stuff going on because you don't understand what feelings is. You got to get that. You got to find out what your feelings are really saying because people are not in contact with the truth of their feelings. They want to be something. Why? You can, you can make yourself be something with anything. You can make yourself want to be in a profession that is not for you and the time is ran out. You can make yourself be in a relationship where the time is ran out or you knew before it happened that it wasn't supposed to be. But the key is, is learning. Like the children of Israel always complaining, getting on Moses' nerves and he's doing the best he can. Who do they think they are when he brought them out of, really? He walked them out of stuff and they still weren't satisfied. It's so much like many of us, God bless us, you know? And we have no responsibility for the issues we create in our life. That's why we blame. Well, if you had to did it this way, I wouldn't have did that. You know what? Keep that for your mama. Because I'm me and you, you. You're responsible for when you go take a bath and when you don't. Do not blame me. If you do, that's cool. But I'm trying to get to a better place because everybody all over the world is using that MO. No responsibility. This is one with, with parents. If a parent with a victim mentality's child gets in a fight at school, it wasn't their fault. It's because the teacher wasn't watching the room and the other kid had it coming and someone else told him to hit him. You know, my mother didn't play. I mean, she would say, uh, yeah, let me go up there and find out it was you. I'm gonna beat you up behind right there in front of the people. So I didn't lie a whole lot, but I did. And when I got that whooping, I didn't do it again because I hated pain. So if you didn't get the promotion, it is because Mr. Johnson was out to get you. It's not always that. Sometimes you're paranoid. It wasn't because he found you playing on the internet every day. What, what was you doing? Why don't people take you serious, right? It's just them. You are the victim. And after all, he will never, he never liked you uh, from the beginning and you knew it. But then, you know, we got to realize if we are in that mindset because it carries over. We don't like ourselves if we are saying this and it really wasn't, you know, Mr. Johnson. Um, we have to get to a place where we uh, love ourselves. And I do hear people saying that they love themselves, but I don't see it. People that I work with, people that, you know, um, yeah. So here, you know, when I say this word, Satan, I want you to understand that there's a dark side of us and a light side of us. I want us to just kind of like stay in the mode of that. And know that as long as we contend to stay in a victim mentality, then this dark side has us apprehended. I don't even need to think about what's going on outside or with somebody and what they did. I need to think about me how the experience went down, I, I need to think about me. Because what I ain't seeing is my own era darkness. And the fact of the matter is, is that some people, they don't, they don't want to talk about this. They don't even teach it. Satan fell from heaven like lightning. That's like lightning. It's like the seed being put, you know, put in your mom's womb. You know, you got to think about stuff further than what people show you. Because if Satan came from heaven, then what? Is he the only one? 
No, he just generated more of them here in the world, such as our social uh, lives and you know the, the system. You know, all of this is systemic. The reason why we won't change is systemic. So Satan, deal with that Satan in us first. Because if I can get that balance yin and yang going on, that Gemini energy, one dark pole and the other one white, then I can bring some constructiveness to my life and manifestation. Because there's not just one polarization working. One is more predominant than the other. And it's always saying, oh, and then you get bitter because you just stay in that darkness, envious. Because you want to see something happen to people. That's going to make you feel good. You know what I'm saying? That's victim. Victims, they can turn into the darkest. Oh, man, it's just sick. And you know how you can know it? Because you've been it. I could just feel it because I've been a victim wishing the worst on people then they come back and wish the worst on you well let's celebrate and laugh they're doing what they're supposed to do we shall overcome right so you got to know what's really happening here and because people they don't want to play right that means show and tell show and tell I show and I tell. That way, you can't play this game with me no more. Satan and me, you can't play it. And then the other people, they can't do nothing either. Look, shut up. I got this. See, that's where the power is. See, when you come clean, the victim and you can't, it can't live. So I just want them to die. Okay, I sure do. But go on ahead. I'm about to do what I need to do as. Um, a woman of God and pray. And I'm going to put those feelings on the table. I'm going to pray for myself. I'm going to stop praying for people. Find no fault in yourself, right? So anyway, moving on. Ultimately, he wants you bitter. This is a sad thing, bitter. Uh, bitter waters. He wants you unforgiving. He don't want you to forgive nobody. He wants you to say, oh, I forgive you. And then you relapse and you go back and you're talking the same crap. You're saying the same thing, the mind. He wants you to constantly um, be upset by things. See, that becomes a, a way of life. Break it. But, you know, when you ask God to break it, know that you won't participate. Don't just say it. Participate. No, I'm not thinking that again, I'm done, I'm done. Fight with yourself. It's better to fight with yourself than others because you give them what they want. Don't fuel those people. Get them out of your life. Those are your manifestations of you. They're victims too, by the way. So you got victims, victims fighting. Oh my God, Jesus. All right, so he wants you feeling like you can't do anything about it, that your life will never change. It won't change as long as you, you, you in that. Engaging. You're engaging. You give them what they want. And it's part of you that never dies until you start to resist the depth book in you and them and flee. You manifested them, they're, they're, they're who you are. I know I did. I manifested some of those folks. That's why the lesson is learned very well. I see me in them. They may not, because they still blaming me. That's good if they blame me, but you know what? That's their loss. Because the scenario in life could have been bitterness and to never progress in life or to give up on helping people, but it did not work. 
I'm sold out. How about you? This is not about praise me. It's examples because I need for you to get real examples. I don't need to come and talk to you about anything that's going on with other people without showing something about myself. And I live it. I'm proud. I'm proud of the ups and the downs. Because the people that wish that on me, they still see I don't look nothing like what I've been through. I'm still here. I'm not bitter. You didn't change my heart. You made me strive for more love and forgiveness and not to kill you. Mm. I gotta, you gotta preach with you. You will always be a victim if you don't hear what I'm saying. You better let them go. They're your manifestations. You created them. You brought them into your life through your energy and your mindset. You drew them. You will never, ever, you see, this is what you're saying. I'll never get a break. I'll never, good. You stay right there. Because if you think you'll never get a fair shake, then you won't. And I don't want to hear it. Why? Because in most cases, I got to deal with my mind on my own and everything that I'm telling you and everything that I've ever told you. I didn't go to the crazy house. I'm here because I believed in something that's foundationally structural. I don't have no cracks because I'm here. I don't care about the material things like others do. Let me see what happens when. Let me, let me just see how you gonna feel. Cause you see people that's been up on the mountain that ain't experienced what we've been through. They won't know how to survive when they mountains coming down like now. Here, this is how someone with the victim mentality thinks they literally believe many lies and falsehoods. You got to figure that one out for yourself. No one can tell you, you see, it's been too much people telling people how to think and how, no, learn how to dis, dis, in, dis dissemble all of that garbage and find out what really matters, what you should have. And then, you know what, let me just add this in here, drama. Identify with your drama. Turn it into good, use it for good, not for the pain of others. Forcing your, you know, your thoughts and your opinion. It's hard for people that really look at this here and say, you know, I've been a forceful person. You know, I was um, controlling too. And so I met with those entities in my life and because I saw them, I said, oof, it's bad. This is really, it's not attractive. I don't care what you have. I, I just can't be imprisoned by you. But I was a prisoner of my own thinking and ways because I had those very ways what I was looking at. So when you look at someone, there's a shadow and you see yourself, admit it. What is it that you see that you don't like in them? Admit it. Because if you don't, you'll become a victim of your own vices. You will not look at them and say, you know what? I see something in myself through this person. That's the mirror. Many people are experiencing it, especially right now. We started in June, July. And people are still experiencing people all around are coming in that they knew and coming back. And also they're experiencing thoughts about people that mirror them. And all they can think about is what the people did wrong, period. Rather than thinking about their self and why the person was in their experience judging them. And, I, and you know, by all means, I don't, you know, I'm not say, saying that people don't, you know, contend to, you know, to, to hurt you 
I'm trying to get people to definitely focus and I'm giving you information on why we have been through hardships that were not necessary. Programming. All right, programming, break it. Not later, now, because we're going into a new world and a new year. And, you know, when you look at the new world is supposed to come, you want the new world to come and think like you did, irresponsible, or I did. You know, you know, get to a place where you've been hurt, and it's not a sarcastic thing to say, hey, how are you? Someone has hurt you. But you hurt someone before, too. There are people in the world, even Christians, who are truly victims. Man, salvation is free. Man. So we have all experienced being a victim at one time or another in life, which is why it's important to identify with the lessons of the victim storyline so that we do not continue repeating. Children of Israel. I get out of prison and I still act like I'm in prison. Complaining, no gratitude. All of us. And we got to realize that we're doing it. I mean, you hear yourself. And if you don't, then you're not conscious. You know when you're in a loop. And if you don't, you're not conscious. That means that it's a repetitious thought about something just going on. You better break it because that's your manifestation. Especially if it ain't a loop on uh, gold, silver, money, um, and productivity. You know what I'm saying? Break it. Worry. It's a loop constantly. Yeah. Anger. Bitterness. Revenge. You can't revenge nobody. That's for God and the goddess. It's not up to you. You know, you, 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 you think about people in this here manner and you ain't got the power. You can't do nothing with, with, when you lack power. Praying against people, you praying, you praying. You have no power, you know, because you won't, you won't even let go of your own issues, which has drawn these things to you, which has been why you're in the situations. The victim, um, we all know what they can be. Temptation, jealousy, provoking, uh, manipulating, judging, pride, faults, lying, all of these things, you gotta identify what it is. Petty, drama, gossiping, petty. I'm trying to think who it was. <laughs> oh, I love it. When I hear somebody say I was just being petty, good. Get out of petty. Get petty out of you. Okay. I was just being. So victory storylines identified they have issues. They then submit to the power of truth. When you identify what a victory storyline is you're able to submit to the power of truth. So somebody might say, well, I have nothing to hide. Okay. Is that just physical or are you hiding spiritual things that you need to deal with? Because I had someone to tell me they had nothing to hide. They, you know, they probably had cleaned up everything externally, but they still was nasty inside. Gotta be careful. Because anybody that's not spiritually yoked with you, um, I don't want to tell anybody that they shouldn't be around anybody else, but you got to watch your ear gates and how you're going through situations, you know what I'm saying, and taking on those personas. Because people that have not cleaned up their insides, they dirty. You know how I know? Because I was. Yeah. The individual consciously consciously take responsibility for allowing people, places, and things to put them in a victim mindset. You become responsible for your, um, your life. And that's when your power starts coming back. It's like, okay, Crimea River has already taken place. 
How long you you going to do it? OK, you've got to do it to get some of that old energy out. This is true. But if you've been petty or pity, I'm having pity parties, you know? No, you got you got to move on from that. That's where your strength comes from. After you got all of the junk out, your strength now. So you, 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 you're responsible. And you start creating on that foundation because you want to be a victor, victorious person. Victorious people, they, don't, they can't keep this here. I want to say ish. False, lying, you can't keep it. You got to let it go. Because this is what drew all of them nasty manifestations of yours to you. That's all I can say. That's what draws it to us. We still have work to do. So victory is when you focus on creating what you want to see happen in your, your life, not what you don't want to happen. I just don't want that no more. I said it too. And it came back. Goodbye. No. All right. You meditate and fight the temptation to revert back to old ways of doing things and thinking. Break the loops. Transforming your life is why you have hit the spot in your life. So you are here to transform what you have. You have the power to do it because you had the power to create it. You say yes to whatever situation you're in. You know, things that happen to us as children. We may have been under the care of our parents, but listen, use them as stepping stones for the betterment of your life. Transform Autobots. You may have been in victim mode all your life, but now you're conscious to it. You wake up and know, yes, you came into a society um, and, and families where you, know, you saw victimization, domestic violence, abuse, uh, rape, but you either be those things or you transform it to something else. You may have been in big, okay, prove you're a victorious individual by shifting your mind to fit where you want to go. Focus on you and no one else. You got to give your space and time to yourself to change. You know, I know as a giver, that the neglect of myself caused me to um, have more imbalances, giving to everyone. And I feel like it's a great lesson. I, I'm, I'm not, you know, angry. I'm in the confusion of some of those lessons. I cried a lot because I needed to understand. But when the tears came out, I, I, I gained so much more information because a lot of things are blocking you. Confusion and the tears will cleanse. A lot of people have fought against, you know, crying. Tears cleanse because it's um, things that's been bottled up within us that need to come out. Situation, experience. I, I don't want to look at what I went through anymore. And it be the catalyst of loss in my life. I want to look at where I'm going and what I want to be for the catalyst of my future and my, you know, my legacy. So this is um, a, a new way to think. You can take that on. You don't have to. So I focus on myself. And, you know, I know that we have a lot of young mothers. I put a lot of energy into my kids. And, you know, I'm proud. Um, to see where they are uh, today. But it's also up to them to be that. I went through a lot to see some of the things that I see today because they, they was bad too. They got in some trouble, okay? And I got one of them out in the streets right now. But, you know, I've been determined not to, you know, take on the responsibility of what he chose. That's the path that he chose. We got to get to a place where we're not allowing other people's situation to dominate us. You know, Jesus became a man at 13 years old, Jews in the bar mitzvah. You got to get out of that. That's traditional thinking that our families gave us. You got to go back and, and do research and find out what's really true. Because, I mean, I don't, you know, this is me. I don't see having a purpose to help people and a portion of my family try to 
stagnate me and keep me from doing that. I got to break that. That means that it is your journey, but you got to find out what your journey is, not what society has said as far as what a good mother, a good father is. Fathers and mothers, they have to take care of their kids until they turn 18, yes? But they're not responsible after that. You got to find out what your story is in that, right? And then you also need to find out why you came here in particular and how it fits your life. So I want you to go back and remember the work is internal. Refer to the um, 12th house and the um, self undoing. Because, you know, a lot of us have been in a place where we hadn't been presented. Our communities of culture do not study this far. And it's a lot of information there that helps us to bind the ties of the power that would be. The would be's are not just political and community leaders. It is even the would be's within our family where there's been controlling powers. That's not God. C-O-N-T-R-O-L, you can't do that. And, you know, with, with, my, with my children, I whooped them, yes. I talked to them and I heard their opinion. But they did not rule until they got of age. And I respected that they had an opinion. I respect it now. I respect their lives to be governed by God so that I know they don't belong to me. They came through me, but they don't belong to me. I'm grateful for a woman who I met when I was 15. And she gave me words of truth. So when I got pregnant, it wasn't my mother or my grandmother that told me this powerful thing that would stay with me. She said, remember that that child is coming through you, not to you. I was able to respect them because of that. We weren't put here to control people. Because if we do, we create victims. They have no power. They have no knowledge over their lives. They have to learn how to live here. And it's not only through our eyes. We don't know the journey. Okay? And so that's what I have for you today. Let's stop creating victims. You guys have anything you want to add? That was powerful, Miss Kim. I wish I, I wish my hair was done so I could take off the camera. <laughs> oh Lord, thank you. <laughs> thank God. Mm -hmm. No, that that was par very, very, very powerful. In fact, like we should have did like a Facebook Live. <laughs> um, and I'm just so thankful for you know um, your level of transparency and. I know that when I first met you, I didn't like crying. And it was one of the first things that you told me I was going to have to do to cleanse. And I fought with it so much. And then when 2020 hit, it was like an uncontrollable um, purge um, that was necessary to release so that I could deal with everything um, that I was facing. And it's a tough road because there's a lot of things that we have to unravel through our journey from our family members and friends and just different dynamics that we go through um, as we're awakening to this calling. So I thank you for um, always sharing and um, giving us a very, very good explicit word on today, whether we like it or not, I thank you for it. Thank you. Thank you for uh, listening and being a part, definitely. Anybody else? I appreciate it all. I have to figure out how to um, connect it with Facebook Live because I have um, those 
modalities in, in YouTube. Um, just hadn't figured that one out yet. Anybody else? Um, there's a program. There's a program. StreamYard, I think, that will allow you to um, stream Facebook, uh, YouTube, and Zoom at the simultaneously. Mm, okay, we'll talk about it. Okay, good. Thank you for the class. This was great, though. Thank you. Thank you for being a part. Thank you, Miss Kim. I really appreciate. Yes, like. Talana was saying earlier, just your transparency and vulnerability, you know, it's just nice having, um, I don't know, these sort of classes and discussions where we're, when we're given the information, um, we don't feel bad about ourselves. Like, oh my gosh, like I'm the only one who does this. You know, I love it when a spiritual leader is able to say, yeah, I mean, we all do it. You know what I mean? Like no one is above anyone in terms of this walk and, and growth journey that we have. Um, on this earth aka school <laughs> yeah yeah you're right I'm grateful uh, for all of you guys in the practice because we definitely are going into some times when this here practice is gonna um, turn into practitioners you know I mean you're mm -hmm. practicing for a reason and it's, it's so um, great that what we're doing also, and thank you for your leadership, because, you know, when I look at, you know, people and their conversations on social media, it's so evident that they are like oblivious to what is really happening. And, you know, one of the things that I and how I encourage myself is just to know that I have to stand in who I am and, it, and it's bigger than me you know I'm, I have a mission and I have to do it because and I tell myself all the time like the people who don't get it yet they, they'll they're about to get it but let me keep just doing what I am supposed to do so that I can be in position um so yeah but people are really oblivious to what's the shifts that are happening and it's like almost like they're living in a bubble and I'm like it, it's it's shocking really for me wow yeah Ooh, girl Oni yes I just I have to co-sign so hard because I feel like mm. I just had the same conversation with Talana the other day because um she gave me some great advice and great wisdom when it came to like my circle of friends um whom I love, but I, I feel like years ago, Talana told me I was going to outgrow some of my friends and I feel like it's happening. And I feel like it's due to this narcissism that's within that social media bubble. And I'm not saying it from a judgmental standpoint, but I just feel like Ms. Kim touched on this too. Like we've, a lot of people have been preparing for what's happening now and what's to come. And it almost feels like I'm living a double life sometimes, which again, that ties back into this class that we had today where, you know, take off the mask, living your truth, but it's becoming suffocating. Um, and I've been working through guilt um, because I've had to separate myself from a lot of people. Mm. And the it's so deep. The reason behind it is so deep and so layered, like you can't even explain it. And I don't know if it's something that needs to be explained. It might just be something that's between me and God, but I have been kind of working through this guilt because, you know, I'm seeing what, what is to come and what's happening now. Um, and it's like, how do you, how do you even get that across to people who are still just drinking, buying labels, flexing for the gram, you know, you didn't like my Facebook such and such, or you didn't like my um, Instagram post or retweeted such and such or gave me a shout out. And it's like, what? I, I'm thinking about <laughs> how people are going to, what's to come, how people are going to have food on the table, how people are going to be able to mentally be okay and prosper after these next few months. Yeah. Right. It's interesting. And, and, 
For me, I don't, I don't think, um, and this is something that I had to learn and it took a while because I had that same guilt. Like, I love these people. Like, why don't they see it? I want them to see it. But um, I realized that it's not my business to try to change some, how someone thinks or sees things. And, and I don't know the Bible, but this is what I'm hearing. So you can tell me if this is applicable, but I'm hearing like, this is like the separation from the wheat and the tares. So it's um, sort of like, you know, we are being separated because they're, they're two different worlds. Um, it's like, it's like been a split. And, and I just feel like the people who like us who are not resonating with everyone else, it's because we've been separated because we have a bigger purpose. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. And um, the, um, the frequencies are um, different. And so you, you can't, you, you won't be able to engage or stay with the same people. You may have conversations, but because the frequency is different. We were um, together for a time in a season, the Bible says it, but you know, when the time had come and the reaping and the sowing, it said that that would be the time of the separation for the wheat and tares and the tares would go into the burn to be burned. So this, you know, a lot of people that they look at and they say, well, you know, Outside, it, it, the sun is shining. It don't look dark, but we do know, and they know if it's, it's dark. Mm -hmm. They feel dark. You feel it. It's, it's not about, see, the light of the world was not, per se, the sun. This is all physical. The light of the world was the light within me and you. So if we are dark, then where is the light at? Right, and I think it's probably like a, um, a, a some sort of mechanism, a coping mechanism for them, like to just stay in the illusion because to really, because they don't understand what probably what they're seeing or even how to navigate it or interpret it. Um, but it's, I mean. It, it's, it it's no different than what we went through to get here. Mm -hmm. The awakening mm -hmm. means that yeah. we don't want to address and we, we, we're afraid to accept that we were a false reality. That means that everything about us, what we created was a lie. That's, that's what is broken down. Until that's we so get, I'm sorry. I said that is so true because yeah. I did go through exactly that. We, we can't forget our own conscious um, thoughts and unconscious thoughts. We can't forget who we were. I see a lot of people that rise to fame and fortune and they forget where they came from. Mm -hmm. and, and that's fine. But the reality is, is that what I came from shaped me for today. You know, if, if it's any good that I did, it's my past that shaped me. You know, if I find no fault in what I walk through, if I could practice that and even the hurt, the abuse, all of these things, then I can say it was good because I take a look at myself and say, yeah, it was good. Thank you. And it's not even being sarcastic. It's all of the pain and all of the headaches. It was worth it. Because see, I, I not only get to give, but I get to give myself credit now for going through hell and coming out. Now, I can't give myself credit for going through hell and coming out if I ain't came out. But I know I'm out. I feel, you know, that's when you feel good about yourself. You feel good about what happened. You feel good about everybody that was a part of it. And, you know, I'm not saying this to push it. it, it's a thought because how will I get to my promise if I don't accept that all that I've been through is what shaped and made me. It's like being on the wheel, the potter's clay, you being molded. You got, you know, there's a level of forgiveness that you have to give to yourself in order to move forward. Before you can forgive anyone else, you need to forgive yourself because you allow whatever. 
You even signed a contract to come here. So forgive yourself for whatever you didn't like. And then try to get to a place where you love it because it's what's propelling you to the next uh, level of life from level to level and glory to glory. And you can't fight the power of God, the universe. And, you know, people are angry with God because they're going through, what do you think you're here for? What do, what, do, what do we think we're here for? Just to get up and create another world and not have no heart about nothing? Well, what the hell you creating? You have no heart for people though. What you creating, what you do for, if you have no heart for people, everything is relational. everything so the attitude that you have towards your brethren you a joke hey i had to say it to myself let it go you you know you keep thinking about stuff and the loop is there break the loop i have to tell myself that that's how i've gotten to this place you know, you know, out of past situations, it's not been all bad. Yes, we get tired of going through, but as much as you're tired, then deal with yourself and stop trying to deal with other people because you ain't got it all together. I know this because I haven't. Wisdom is acquired. Wisdom will grant you many, many things because it's better than money. Wisdom. So to go through the school of hard knocks and feel broken, to run away from the um, idea of having to go through losses and breakdowns or the fear of facing something that I feel like I cannot overcome, you won't have fear if you just face it. Whatever it is, it won't be there. The reason why is because you're looking at it. You're standing up to it. It don't matter what it is. I don't wanna call out no specifics. But you can practice looking at something, how you're going to walk through it, and you overcome it because you have faced it. That's fear. That's where you overcome fear, when you face it. You got to accept it, whatever it is, and deal with it that way. Face it. Because if you keep trying to go this way and that way, it's coming back. That's just the same as the shadow. You keep going all around trying to avoid it, escape it. That's the 12th house. You better study yourself. Anything that you face head on, you're going to overcome it. And some people don't know what it is, but they do. When they are ready to accept it, they will overcome it. If they don't ever accept it, then maybe they have to repeat it and come back into this hell hole. Sorry. Anybody else? I just want to say thank you, Ms. Kim. Um, I really needed that, um, and especially after a conversation I had with Ashley, uh, I want to say yesterday, this is just confirmation um, to basically look within myself more and figure out why I allowed certain things to happen or why I manifested a certain situation. And I realized that I did manifest it. And because as you told me yesterday, she was like, you wanted the situation to happen. And I was like, no, I didn't. And she's like, yeah, you did. And I was like, I didn't. And I sat with it and I realized that subconsciously there was still some anger there. So yeah, I manifested what happened. Like I, I manifested the situation that happened and now I'm dealing with why I manifested it and my anger. 
and my feelings and focus on why why I allowed myself to be controlled or why I allowed someone um, someone else's thoughts of, about me control my feelings. And I was like, dang it, Ashley, right? <laughs> Ashley's always right. And this is this is confirmation that yeah, I was excuse my language, but it's confirmation that I fucked up with allowing yeah. myself to yeah. into that place. Yeah, not wanting to yeah, be responsible not for, to your be own life. for your own life. Mm -hmm. So that's that's something that everyone has that's to deal with. That everyone has to deal with. Yeah, after I cooled down, I told Ashley, I was like, I fucked up. And she was like, oh, you're, you, you finally seeing you finally seeing your sense now. And I was like, shut up. <laughs> but yeah, 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 I, I, I am now dealing with myself about it and taking accountability for my actions and and my not actions so yeah yeah good that's good to hear people i said here faults are lying to yourself manipulating yourself <laughs> judging yourself pride prone to provocation temptation temptation people do not want to not engage in drama therefore what you find is is that they have drama in them the clash you got to win pride you got to have what you need to have pick and choose your battles everyone wisdom you grow up and then you'll find things changing because as long as you engage in fights and it's not um, one that God has created for you to fight like David got his God given battles. What happens is, is that if you keep creating, you got energy in the universe that's keeping you from being blessed. You put it out there because people judge each other. This would go on and on, this here discussion. The thing about it is, is that, I'm gonna say this to everyone, I would rather you work at transforming your life than telling me that you're going to do or be something that you're not. So, because I've been all of these things, I can know when people are walking in their not self. I know it, I mean, I hear you, I hear people. So when you are ready for the changes, you're going to release yourself from the battle. Because this Christian uh, way uh, concerning the Christos was not about the battle. That's, a, um, that's the Roman soldiers uh, battles way. That's external. You do have to fight sometime, but people, are prone to act and respond in engaging. You need to get balanced there. Why? How do I know? Because I can feel myself wanting to defend me about things. But that's not the way. Because if you're defending yourself, then who's defending? I mean, where is this higher power that you have? Huh? Huh? Where is it? What you talking about? If you ain't got supernatural working for you, then where is all this God stuff you talking about? So, any more questions or answers, add, and then we're going to go ahead and pray and close out. All right, I'm going to look up this here scripture while I'm waiting. And this is where we're going to begin. We're going to look at Caleb and Joshua as ourselves and, and see the giants defeated, whatever it is that you're dealing with.
Okay, so one of the things that victimization, you know, we spoke about what it brings is lack. And most people think lack is in finances, but it's lack in health and wealth and mindset and uh, friendships and um, social um, ventures, profession. It brings lack, okay? The victim. So we want to go to uh, Deuteronomy 8 and 18. And we want to look at what God has given us. And beyond all that we discussed, this is what we end with. And you should remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get well, that he may establish, confirm his covenant, which he swore to your forefathers. Now, if you want to know about the covenant, you can go into Deuteronomy 5 and read 5, Deuteronomy 5 and 6. And um, the covenant is there. And that covenant is, is said between you and it was given to your forefathers. So it's to be passed on to your children, all right? Because it establishes a spiritual work in your life and who your connection is and what. So, Father, we just thank you for this time. We thank you uh, for taking the limits off. We thank you for no weapon formed against us can prosper. That the blood of Jesus, it keeps us, it saves us and raises us um, from level to level and glory to glory. We thank you for uh, giving us an eye and a spirit to see the mysteries that have been covered. And we thank you for um, virtual breakthroughs I hear. We thank you for virtual breakthroughs. And we thank you for your presence. We thank you for love and your mercy and your grace. By your power and your strength, we're able to overcome every situation that comes our way, but we take power today knowing that you have given us the power to create the things in our life that we desire to see. We thank you for shifting our mind from what has been to what is and what will be. Thank you for power and authority over the beast of the field. We thank you for your presence. We thank you that every enemy we created has been defeated in Jesus' name, just like David. We thank you that we can come to you and consult with you concerning the circumstances of our life and get an understanding of how to go and where to go. Thank you that you've given us the power to obtain wealth. And even in Deuteronomy 15 and 2, you said that this is the day of the exactor. And so we just bind up debt. We bind up the mind of lack. We bind up the mind of victimization. We take responsibility today for all the things you've given us and release the thoughts and ideas of what we don't have. We thank you that we can speak and a thing shall come forth. We thank you for power and authority in this earth as we take back our power from the powers that would be. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for healing powers, healing throughout our families. Thank you that nothing can stop what you can do. And thank you for the confidence and courage to stand against our naysayers and that you shut the mouth of our naysayers. Thank you that it is you that gives us the power to run through troops and leap over walls. You said one can put a thousand to flight and two can put 10,000 to flight. We take that on and we give you praise for it. We thank you that everything that resembles a giant, Lord God, that we know that we are even bigger and stronger, that we can defeat every giant. Even with you, the mountains are moved in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for this. And Lord, we thank you for a consistent study of ourselves. Thank you that you bring us back to it. Whenever our minds become distracted from ourselves in this time and season, that you bring us back to ourselves to study those things that you've given us to study. You said to study and show yourself approved. Keep us in a focus 
but keep us in a focus of health and healing, healing for ourselves and healing for the brokenhearted, healing for mothers and fathers that have lost their children, healings for communities, healing for families, um, Lord, that have lost homes and they have no food to eat. We thank you for providing for you are the provider. You are the help and you are the way maker. There is none like you. We give you praise. We love you and we adore you. We thank you for all that you do and you make a way out of no way. Thank you for leveling the mountains. Thank you, God, for preparing a table before us in the presence of all of our enemies. Thank you that our cup overrunneth. Thank you for the flow. Thank you that we're in the flow of what's happening and that you give us instruction in these days and times concerning what we are to do, how we're to navigate through uh, the next year or two where you are bringing a change, a shift. We thank you for the spirit of freedom. We thank you that we overcome lack through this freedom. Thank you that the protesting is opening up doors for each and every one of us in our generations to come for a better life. Thank you that we're planning for the future and the future generations. Thank you that we come together to do this. Thank you, we understand the dynamics of the generations that we're not self-serving and it's just not about us, that it is about us as a community working together. Thank you that we're able to pull our resources together and not fear that there's any lack if we do this. We thank you for financial blessings for each and every person that's listening right now. Thank you that you are the power within us and that you open doors that no man can shut, that you bless us and no one can take the blessing. As we bless, others are blessed. Thank you for the cycle of blessings, the increase, the increase, the increase. Thank you for the angelic hosts that are assisting us and even our guides, thank you for the next level agendas that you're giving us right now. Thank you that those that have had problems, the problems shall cease. Thank you even that those that are dreaming shall dream more and they shall speak and prophesy. Thank you for the confidence and courage to stand in the gap to assist others, but know that it is our purpose and it has been set for a pointed time and it shall be. And so we thank you for prosperity now, prosperity now, prosperity now. And we call it forth increase, increase for each and every family. Financial blessings come from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Healing come from the north, the south, and the east, and the west. We command the blessings. And we command peace in households right now in the name of Jesus. Not just in the households, but even in the family members. Peace, shut the mouth of aggravation and uh, consistent argumentative people, Father. Shata, shut down. Ura shabakata, the mouths. Urabasikata, shut the mouths of these argument of spirits. Shata, let there be peace. Shata, ye, boro shaba. Let there be peace. Erebo, shata. And let the financial blessings come forth. Every liar and thief that is spoken against your children. As they're researching their cells, let the liars and thieves be exposed. The assistance that's needed to get the um, agendas done for you and the purpose done, send forth the blessings and the people to assist your people now to get the agendas done. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, glory, glory, hallelujah. Thank you for manifestations of health, wealth, and prosperity right now. Thank you for healing of hearts and minds. And thank you that your people feel the freedom to release themselves from the bondage, that they have the power to release themselves from the bondage that they've been in. We thank you there's no lack and we bind the spirit of victimization. We usher in the spirit of victory as we release victimization. We thank you for the spirit of victory, victory in every area of our life, emotionally, mentally, physically, and spiritually. We thank you, we thank you 
And it is so, and it is so, amen. Amen. amen.